The story of Marla McCants is one with several twists and turns, yet a powerful one. So let's find out together what happened to the most obese black woman in the world and see what she looks like today. Marla's life is what you describe as a roller coaster. In the early years of her life, she carried a horrific burden with her, a secret so painful she wasn't able to tell anyone about. Up until she was six years old, her dad had taken her innocence and violated their father-daughter relationship. Marla, who grew up in Detroit, Michigan, believed that getting into high school would be her opportunity to start a new chapter in her life, and she was right. Her life changed for the better in high school. The teenager fell in love, and she felt like she had everything she ever needed. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and click the notification bell for more amazing stories. At this point, Marla's weight wasn't a problem. Even though she was bigger than most of her peers, she was just a teenager who was in love. Her high school sweetheart was everything she wished for. He was her Prince Charming and made her feel like she was the only girl in the world. But sometimes all good things don't last forever. Sometimes even princes can become villains. Marla noticed that her boyfriend wasn't who she thought he was. He had anger issues and became aggressive when things didn't go his way. When she had enough and told him she was no longer interested in the relationship, he refused to let her leave. Instead, Marla was forced to stay against her will by the man she fell in love with. Her boyfriend, who made her happy, was now the one who held her captive. Rather than treat her like his queen, as he always called her, he treated her like his property. She feared for her life, as he was armed and dangerous. When she eventually saw a chance, she got her hands on a phone and called the police to reveal her location. Marla was apprehensive and cautiously optimistic as she counted down the minutes until the police came to her rescue when she heard them arrive. Marla was excited because her freedom was in sight or maybe not. No one could have foreseen what happened next. Like a scene in an action movie, when everyone realized they underestimated the villain, Marla's boyfriend opened fire on the two police officers who came to rescue her. The young lady wasn't phased by the unexpected turn of events, but instead used this opportunity to escape. Out of the house. Marla ran and ran as fast as she could. She kept on running and never looked back. She knew that if she slowed down, even for just one moment, he could catch up with her and she would be next. The day after Marla left Detroit and headed for Nashville, Tennessee, however, even though she had now put 877 kilometers between her and her ex-boyfriend, she was still terrified. Going through that period had caused her more trauma than she could imagine. Marla flinched every time she heard someone knock on the door. Even when she heard an unexpected sound, she trembled as she was worried that he had come for her. She would find herself staring into nothing for minutes and only snapping out of it when someone called her name. She didn't have a phone during this period because she was worried he would use it to trace her. Her ex-boyfriend was still on the loose, so she lived her life in fear. Marla locked herself indoors and turned to food for comfort. She found refuge in eating fast food and this helped her not focus on what or whom she believed was coming together. No one expected that what provided her relief during these difficult moments would, in the long term, create a serious, life-reeling problem. Finally, Marla got the message that she no longer needed to live her life in fear. Her boyfriend had finally been arrested, and he would no longer be bothering her. She could not live her life without worrying that she had a target on her back. Isn't that amazing? However, by this time, Marla had weighed 700 pounds or 318 kilograms. Even though she was now free from her ex-lover, another sort of damage had been done and this problem confined her to her bed. She could no longer stand up anymore as her legs couldn't hold her weight. Marla could no longer do anything by herself. Instead, she relied on her three daughters, Brittany, Adele, and Sierra for everything 
It was her daughter's job, even to wash and help her clean herself. She had her children bring a table to the bed, which she used to make food for herself. The mother of three stated that she became a junk food junkie. I'm a junk food junkie. Marla would buy chicken and fry it on her bed by dipping it in oil. She then covered her fried chicken tenders and French dressing before eating them. Because of her morbid obesity, Marla suffered from arthritis, growth swelling in her joints, and diabetes, in addition to being bedridden and in constant pain. Marla was scared that one day her daughters would walk into the room and find her dead. This fear prompted her to make an important decision. She decided that she wanted to work with weight loss expert Dr. Yuna Nozaradin and be a part of season three of my 600 pound life show. She told her daughter Sierra and they moved to Houston together. Marla was unable to get out of bed. She had to call an ambulance to transfer her to her daughter's car where she sat for the entire 13 hour drive. Because of her size, the 43-year-old barely survived the journey. A blood clot that had formed in her leg after years of not moving dislodged during the trip and traveled to her lung. By the time she got to the hospital in Houston, her health was rapidly declining. When Dr. Gunn met her, he said, she's in the worst condition, health-wise, that I have ever seen. I'm not as worried about weight loss surgery as I'm about making sure she will survive the next 24 hours. This is a very dangerous situation. She's at the end of her life if we can't do anything. The surgeon stated that she should have never traveled, as it had only made things worse for her health. He put a filter in her leg to prevent any more blood clots from forming. After Marla recovered, she was put on a 1,000 calorie per day diet while she was in the hospital. Dr. Yuan also explained that if she had stayed in Nashville any longer, she would have died in months or weeks. But despite the danger of developing another blood clot, Marla refused to stand or move her legs. This is the point when you realize just how much damage Marla's size has done to her mental health. She sent her physical therapists away and maintained that everyone was pushing her too hard. Whenever she was pressured to stand up, she screamed in pain and frustrated the efforts of anyone who tried to help her. Dr. Yuan opted to perform gastric bypass surgery a few months later because there was no other way to help her. However, Marla was still at risk of developing blood clots, but she continued to rely on a physical therapist to move her legs for her. At this point, the surgeon discharged her from the hospital as she wasn't ready to stand up and take the next step to achieve her goals. Marla moved back in with her daughter and claimed she could make healthy choices on her own, but could she or would she remain like this for the rest of her life? Eight weeks after leaving the hospital, nothing had changed. She was still in the same spot as when she got back from the hospital. Sierra realized that her mother would not make any progress unless she got the proverbial kick in the backside. So she yelled at her mom before making a desperate call to Dr. Yang. Binding bonds through beautiful tales. Thank you for watching.